Hello, my name is Andrew Schaff, and I am pastor at First Baptist Church of Soap Lake. And I want to encourage you to get your Bible uh, today and take it and open it to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 1. And actually, while you're doing that, let me introduce myself a little bit more. Uh, I said I'm a pastor in Soap Lake, but I want to show you my family. Here's my family this last Christmas. This was our Christmas picture. And there is my wife, Hannah, and our oldest son behind me, Samuel, uh, Ellie, Anna, Haven, Stacia, and Lucy. And so that's our family uh, that God has blessed us with. If you don't know where Soap Lake, Washington is, here is Soap Lake, Washington. It's kind of central Washington, maybe a little bit over to the east in Washington. All right, so by now you should have your Bible and should be opened to Mark chapter 1. And we're actually going to be looking at verses 29 through 34. But I want to just give you a moment, take a moment to get the context to see what's going on. Because you see in verse 29, it says, Now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue... And I want you to know what's happening just right before that. And I'm sure someone else has, has preached on this or talked on this, but let me just give you a little bit of context. So in verse 21, they're in the city of Capernaum. Capernaum, let me show you that real quick, is on the north end of the Sea of Galilee. See that red line? That's going all the way from Nazareth to the top of the Sea of Galilee. That flag, that little blue flag, if you can see that, black or blue, I'm not sure what color it is, that is Capernaum, and that blue body of water is the Sea of Galilee. So this is where they are, and they are going into the synagogue on the Sabbath, and Jesus is teaching in there. And as he's teaching, people are astonished. They're just like, wow, who's this guy? I mean, he has authority. He teaches like the scribes. But in the midst of all this, there is a man in there with an unclean spirit in the synagogue. And the Lord cast the unclean spirit out of him. Now, when he was done with that, and of course, everybody is surprised. And they're like, what is this? Verse 27. What is this? What is this new doctrine? Oh, for 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 with authority, he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. And they're all like surprised and like, wow, who is this? And his fame, it says in verse 28, is spreading throughout all the region of Galilee. And so all around the Sea of Galilee, Capernaum, all that, the uh, news about Jesus is spreading. So this is the Sabbath. They've gone in. He's gone into the synagogue. He is taught. Now it is the, the time that the synagogue is over and he heads over to somebody's house. Look at verse 29. As soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. All right. So they are, they are, they are going, they are going to take their Sunday afternoon nap. Now, of course, I know it's Saturday, Sabbath. So their Sabbath day nap. And uh, they go to the house of uh, Peter's mother-in-law, or Peter's, and Simon Andrew, probably where they, maybe where they grew up. And we learned earlier on in this chapter that um, Simon, who is Peter, uh, his brother Andrew, and then there's another set of brothers here, James and John. And uh, just let me point out, you probably already know this from what you've been watching, but James and John, well, I guess later on, are called the Sons of Thunder. How would you like that name? That's pretty cool, huh? Hey, what title do you have? We're the Sons of Thunder. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, so they're in this house, and uh, they're going to take their Sunday afternoon rest. Sorry, Saturday afternoon rest, have a meal, whatever. But they get there, and Peter's, or Simon's, wife's mother lay sick with a fever. So Peter's mother-in-law is sick and she has a fever. You say, well, no big deal. You know, just let her rest and get better. Well, a fever was very general. It's a very general term. So she could have been really sick. In fact, even as you see in the text, when they say they told him about her at once, uh, there's this aspect that they, they're coming and telling Jesus because it's pretty bad. Well, what is Jesus going to do? And why would they come to Jesus? Now, so far in Mark, 
we haven't seen any healing going on yet. We've seen him in the synagogue. He's cast out an evil or an unclean spirit. But why would they tell Jesus about her being sick? Well, in verse 31, Jesus comes, takes her by the hand, lifts her up, and immediately the fever left her. Immediately the fever left her. Wow! You know, Jesus is pretty smart. Think about it. He goes in there, he just lifts her up, and in the process of lifting her up, her fever immediately leaves. I think I'm going to try that next time one of my kids are sick. I'm going to just go in there, I'm just going to lift them up. And the process of standing them up is going to get them all better, right? No. There's a miracle that happens here. The power of Jesus heals her in the process of him raising her up. And in the last part of verse 31, we see that she serves them. Why? Because of her thankfulness? Perhaps. But maybe the, the text is just letting us know that she's okay. She's doing well. The fever is totally gone. Well, after that happens, the evening, verse 32, comes about. The sun has set, and they, the people of Capernaum, bring to him all who were sick and those who are demon-possessed. Now, let's pause for a minute. It's the Sabbath. You're not allowed to do work on the Sabbath. It goes from Friday evening till Saturday evening. But when Saturday evening comes, when the sun sets, the Sabbath's over. And so they could travel to Jesus. They could bring their sick to Jesus. And they do that. And you notice what they bring. They bring those who are sick and those who are demon-possessed. Those two classifications Jesus has just dealt with in that day. He has cast out an evil spirit, a demon, out of someone in the synagogue. And he has healed Peter's mother-in-law. And so the, I'm sure the word has gotten out and people are coming. In fact, verse 33, Mark adds a little hyperbole here when he says the whole city was gathered together at the door. Hyperbole just means that he's exaggerating. Uh, I'm sure the whole city wasn't there, not the entire city, but it felt like it. Everybody was coming to be healed by Jesus. And in verse 34, he heals many who are sick with various diseases. It wasn't just that Jesus was had the specialty of taking care of the fever, but there's various diseases. Jesus is able to heal them all. Not one disease shows up where Jesus is like, oh, I, I'm sorry, I can't heal that one. That's too bad of a disease. And there's not one demon that shows up that he says, oh, that demon's too strong. I can't heal that demon. He can't cast out that demon. And so they are bringing all of them. He is healing the diseases and casting them out. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. And that's part of the Lord Jesus Christ's objective goal at this time for them not to pronounce him. Well, I, I think this is a, a very interesting story. But there are several things that I think we can learn from this. And by the way, let me just give you a little heads up. If you want to... Sometime you can Google this or, or look this up on the internet. This is where Peter's house probably was. And you can see uh, there's a limestone uh, synagogue and then there's an octagon uh, church there that was built in the fifth century that is supposedly over where Peter's house uh, was here on the northern end of Capernaum. And so if you're going to go to Israel, you might even be able to go there and look at it. But anyways, in your spare time, sometime you can look that up and uh, learn more about it. How do we apply this to our lives? What does this all mean for us? Well, let me say a few things. First of all, I want you to understand that there is a tender care with Jesus. He loves us. He is so compassionate. Do you know that even when you're sick with something that's small, he cares about that? I love that about our Lord. One of the uh, verses that have really, that's really been, a couple of verses that have really been special to me recently is Matthew 11, 28 through 29. And it says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Our Lord is so compassionate. He calls us to come and cast our burdens on him. So whatever you're going through, whether it's a fever 
or whether it's something greater. You can come to him. He cares for you. The second thing that I love about this text is that we see the power of Jesus. There is nothing too great for Jesus. He is all powerful. He can heal the sick. He can cast out demons. I love that. I love that. So whatever you're going through, you know that not only the Lord Jesus Christ cares for you, but also that he is powerful, more powerful than your situation or your disease or your suffering. And he can heal. Oh, he can heal. And you know, one of the greatest things about our, what I, one of the greatest things that I love about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ his power, I mean, he could, in an instant, if he wanted to, he could heal any physical disease we have. But do you know that he did something greater for us? Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven of our sins and have eternal life. He is, in a sense, he has healed us eternally if we will come to him and believe. I hope you've done that. I hope you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the third thing that I want to just just say, not only is there a tender care coming from Jesus, not only is there power found in Jesus, but the fame of Jesus should be spread around to all the nations. Here it is. He's he's healing people and casting out demons, and the whole city is coming to hear and to see and to be there. Just Jesus, I want to come to him. I want to be healed. I want my demon cast out. We have the, the message, the good news, the gospel that Jesus Christ saves, that Jesus Christ forgives. We should be sharing that message so that his fame is going out into all the world, so that people would actually come to us and say, tell me this message about this Jesus. Who is he? A neat little passage found here in Mark. I hope it's encouraged you. Thank you for letting me share God's word with you. The Lord bless you.